WYPA Up Radio with MC8. Steel and Big James has taken over the radio station. When I write you all across the USC, Compton, Watts, Bay to LA, from on to California, from valley to valley, we represent that killer county. So if you're keeping it real on your side of your town, you tune in to Gangsta Chronicles. Gangsta Chronicles, we gon' tell you how it goes. Uh, if I lie, my nose will grow like Pinocchio. We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Hey. Gangsta Chronicles, this is not your average show. You're now tuned into the real MC8, Big James, and Big Stale. This is strictly from the streets. Hello. We represent. Hey, what's up? What's up, Ma? Oh, nothing, man. No, no, I, I go by James, big bro. How you doing, know. sir? I apologize. I truly apologize. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, shit, I don't know if we lost Norm or not, but man, um, I don't know, bro. You know, uh, us conversating, I, I'll be seeing where you coming from, and and I think we understand each other. We all good. I want to send out uh, whatever was articulated to you in some kind of way. Um, I want to send, like I send my apologies out to you. And as long as, we, you know, we are gentlemen first. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Don't come into a conversation uh, or anything as a gentleman. Well, we good, brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I heard you lost, I know you lost your brother to the gang. I lost my brother out there. He was in the streets in St. Louis. and. Uh, I know, I know of some of the pain you may feel because I felt that pain too. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Well, you know, I'm I'm actually getting over that. You know what I'm saying, my brother. You know the 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 hatred I had for Suge. Um, I'm I'm pretty much over that. You know, I'm letting him rest. I'm done with it. Uh, right. I know there's nothing I can do about that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know, you know, I can't be but I can't be mad at Shug forever. I ain't trying to be mad at him forever. You know, I can forgive, but I can't forget. You right. know what I mean? But I'm not gonna go every day feeling the way I used to feel. It it, it just wasn't healthy for me. You know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, and I know everybody across the board feel that way. You know, Biggie Mama, Tupac Mama, you know. Everybody lost somebody to this, to the BS. You feel me? Right. So, I mean, I think everybody just need to get over it. Um, you know, I listened to you talk and I listened to a lot that you had to say about the situation, about the way Puff was, pretty much the same way that Shug was. And, you know, like I was telling you earlier, a lot of people don't, don't you know, they're paying attention to the wrong thing. You know, we praising, you know, these two guys, but then we're not really thinking about the depths of, of, of Tupac, Biggie, and all the other cats that lost their lives. We got a lot of cats out here that's dead behind this East Coast, West Coast shit. Right. And, and, you know, the guys that hate each other because of the situation. So there's a lot of there's a lot of us involved in some shit that that shouldn't have never been. And right down the day, we still got brothers not fucking with each other on, on some man. I ain't fucking with that nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? I listened to the interview you had with uh, what's his name, Lil C's or somebody you had an interview with with Mace. With Mace. And right. and right off the top, I knew it wasn't... We can't get nowhere if we start arguing with each other. Right. Opposed to, you know, I think y'all should have had a conversation before, like we did, before, you know, y'all tapped in with each other and other right. people can hear what the fuck was going on. Uh, we opened the door for social media to come in and comment on the shit that we talking about or that was going on. Now everybody voiced their own opinion, but then we get mad at the shit of, you know, the comments that are being said because you had some people 
on his side, you had a lot of people on your side. I mean, where we draw the line at? You know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna voice their own opinion on 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 how they felt. And you know, one he said, "You had a pistol. Why you didn't shoot? If you was in the same boat, why you didn't?" So I mean, that's my opinion on it. If he can say that, why didn't he react a certain kind of way to the situation? Well, to piggyback on that, Mace Mace was only being sadistic in the manner in which after Big got killed, me and Mace had a conversation directly after Big got killed. You right. understand? I was one of the people that he called. We spoke on the telephone. You understand? And yeah. I could have put Mace right, way out the water because Brandy was not in the room with Mace during the time Big got killed. Right. She was trying to get Mace out the room because Mace told me Yo, Brandy kept calling me, trying to get me out the room, and I told her I wasn't going nowhere. I could have blew him out the water with that, because he forgot that he told me. Now, maybe she went to the room after Big got killed to console him, or whatever the fact way may be. I never said that. Thing. Mace knew that I had blew that light at the corner. You understand? Because the dude who was looking out for Mace, named Tone, he the one who saw the individual pull a weapon at the corner. You understand? He told us, we think the guard is going to put on reverse or turn around. He, he, he ran forward. So, it's nothing I can do on that time. What Do I make some innocent bystanders? Right. So, you know, in, in that aspect, he knew the whole thing, but what he had to do, he had to save himself. He had to save himself because he knew not to go to the party. Puff ain't Puff ain't make him go to the party like he made Big go to the party. See, people don't understand that every time Puff hit the streets in California, I was next to him. I was right next to him, except that one day in which he took D-Rock with him, with Sally Richardson and some other people, so he could party or have fun or do whatever they were doing, so he could convince D-Rock that he wanted to go to that party and he needed to get Big to that party. Even today, you, if you hear Snoop, and somebody sent me him and Snoop online on Instagram, and Puff brought up, you know, like, you, it was a fake East Coast, West Coast war. How is a fake East Coast, West Coast war when people lost their life? People couldn't travel. People didn't feel safe. How was that fake? But he still want to put that out there because he don't want to admit. So I know Puff People don't want me. Yo, Gene, let it go. Let it go. Man, listen to me. I don't hate that boy. I don't care shit about him. Like I was telling people up today, I'm good. Like Mob Jane, I told you, I ain't never got to leave out my house if I don't want to. And I get paid. I pimp the mailman now. I set up my life. I did everything that I could do and wanted to do. You understand? So now I can live comfortably. You understand? I'm 56 years old and I'm living comfortably. I'm good. You understand? You know, people who've been to my house, people who've been around me, yo, I got old schools, I got old cars, I got old trucks. I can get a new car, new truck, get anything I want to in life. I set myself up for that. And I tell my kids every day, when you turn 18, what you do in the next five years is going to determine how you live the rest of your life. They went to college, they go to co they, they, they finish college, they doing their thing, one is still in college doing their thing. Listen, I'm happy. I'm not upset at Puff. I'm not upset at none of this. It was an experience. But if I could talk about it, I could be about it, and I could teach and tell people about it, I'm going to do it. If they hate me for it, man, listen here. They hated Jesus Christ. What they do, they wear him around his neck right now and call him God. You understand? I have no problem with that. Everything good on that side? Yeah, hold on. James, unmute the phone now. You can unmute it now. Okay. Let me let me let me let me ask you this. Knowing in law enforcement and then knowing anytime a motherfucker in a shooting or a drive-by, whatever the case might be, I think those cats did the right thing being in that car. You know, when you hear gunshots, you're gonna fucking duck. You ain't gonna really see what's going on in the first the first three Ma, seconds. Ma, James, Ma, yeah. I gotta stop you right there. No, 
if you train, if you are trained, you don't duck for nothing. I no, don't know, I, I've been in shootings. I've no, been not a police officer. I'm talking about, I'm talking about guys just, uh, just an average street cat. Now well, I've been game banging. I, 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 I can't articulate for those street cats because I know some serious street cats, and it seemed like they got, like, <laughs> like, like they got, they got. I would want to go to war with them because I've seen them. Uh, let me just say this: I know street cats. If they in situations like that, they don't duck. They don't what you call. Lou C's said, you know, he saw somebody uh, dressed like the Nation of Islam. You understand? Yeah. That's what Lou C said. He said somebody dressed like the Nation of Islam, and then they 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 they, they start shooting. Now they made a duck after the shooting when the shooting start, but he said that. And then when I said somebody walked up to me in Puff's car, he had a blue suit, white shirt, blue bow bow tie, and a peanut looking head. You understand? And they said, Hey, how do you know that? I said he walked up to the car with me and Cuff, with me and Puff car. So now we put that guy at the scene. So now whether he saw all of it or not, he saw the guy in that car. He saw that guy in that car. I saw that guy come up to me and pump. The LAPD shows me a picture. A All picture. Right. Let me ask you this. The guy that walked up to you, can you actually place him? And everybody want to know this. Can you actually place that guy as being the shooter? Can you actually say he the one that did it? I mean, he Bro. outside talking to you. Can you place him in the car and being the shooter at the same time? Bro. To be totally honest, and I'm always going to be this way. Right. I would have known the guy in the blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie was in that car if Little C's and Paul wouldn't have said nothing. I could place him walking up to me five minutes prior to Big getting killed. So I can't place him in the car. He walked in that direction. What a right. Car. I've always said that. Right. I can only place the guy right there with me and Puff and walking in that direction. I wouldn't have never known he was in the car if right after, not two months later, not two days later, while we was at the hospital, they said a guy, they said a guy in a, uh, dressed like the Nation of Islam shot big. I said, because I seen the guy walk in that direction, he had a blue suit on, white shirt, blue bow top, peanut hair, peanut looking hair. I can't place him. I can only put him in the going in the direction. You know what I'm saying? Five minutes later. Five minutes later. But if they wouldn't have said he, it, it was a guy with a blue suit, a, a nation of Islam's guy, and I and I said the color, and they said yeah, then I wouldn't have never known. The the cool thing about it is is you guys is doing the same thing that we doing over here about Pac. We we all blaming who should have did what and why they didn't do what, and that's the same thing you going through. That's the, that's the same thing everybody is going through, and I think everybody is to blame. You know, if if the homies would have took care of the situation with Tupac opposed to Tupac doing it, then it would have it would have directed the attention in a in a you know a different way. This is what I believe. But and then if if like you said, if only I could take that date back and, and do it different, then Vicky probably would have still been here. I would have never got in the car. I would have never got in the car with Puff. But see the thing about it is is that you know uh if I had known my friends and them, what they did was they was at Steve Stouts them house. And they seen something that wasn't right up there and it looked like a setup. And because they from the street and they gangsters, they was coming to set, tell us, yo, don't go up to that party because it's a setup up there. It was a party in the hills. Now, when I talked to some guys out there and I talked to some people on the other, on the other op, they told me, yo, they was waiting for y'all to come in the hills at first. Some people was waiting for us to come up the hill 
because they knew Steve Stott was giving a party up there and Puffman was invited. So, so Puff, they was Puff knew about this the information? Huh? I said, Puffy knew about all this? He was told that it's a setup? Yo, bro, he was told not to go to the party. I told him not to go to the party before we left Steve Stott, I mean, uh, Andre Rail's house. I told him. And, and he I still went. Him, huh? And he still went. He still went. This is what people don't understand. And then you got to look at me. I'm the number. Every guy who was coming from Cali, when they came to New York, Mac 10, Exhibit, uh, 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 Nate Dog. Who was bodyguarding them? Me. You understand? I'm that dude. So now, when shit happens, Ma, I mean, James, uh, when, when stuff happened, James, and I look bad because now Big is killed on my watch. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot of stuff for me. You right. understand what I'm saying? Because this dude didn't listen to what I told him. You understand? So wow. now, we be at that situation. If I take, yo, listen to me. I believe Puff Girl was putting that stuff in the book. I believe Kim was right next. Because Kim was right there. Paul was right there. I say, Puff, I got go to I'm like, go I ahead. got intel on you, brother. I said, Puff, I got intel on you, bro. We can't go to that party, man. Some people going to come and kill us, man. I People that told me that. A dude that was in the federal jail out there, he's out now. He's out now. He caught, gave me a phone call. He said, Big G. I said, yeah, what's up, man? He said, yo, best up. I said, all day, every day. He said, they coming to get y'all, man. I get a call from my man, Chaz Williams. He said, yo, it's going to be some street niggas coming at y'all tonight. He went to that Steve Stout party on the hill. He left the... Because I told him we was at the museum, man, and it looked shady. So he was coming to the museum. Him and his crew, and, and two of them are still alive, was on the corner when Ben got shot. Wow. They saw it go down. They didn't know it. They seen us chase the guy. They followed us to the hospital. When Puff got ready to leave the hospital, he had his crew and his team follow us, and Puff them stopped the car on the highway and go tell Chad, yo, we don't need all that. Damn. So so how do those guys, how they feel about Puffy now? I mean, Puffy's still living and doing his thing. And they, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't know, God bless the dad, Chaz is gone, and they don't care nothing about Puff. They never care. Like it was because for him, and I was one of his people. He wasn't gonna see nothing happen to me, right? He wasn't gonna see nothing happen to nobody from New York if he could, because he was that New York type of dude. He was the one with Big D and Eric B who set up that meeting with Shug to get that East Coast West Coast thing squashed, <clears throat> right? And Puff wouldn't even send a representative, brother. So you think he wanted that war? You think you think it was more beneficial to to send Biggie out there like that? Because I I mean that's a mission that you shouldn't have went on for number one after Tupac was killed, and then you're gonna go to the Lions Den right after that. You knew it was gonna be repercussion after Pac was killed. You know what I'm saying? But and bro, he said he didn't know. He said it was none. You know, I got kids 17 and 18 years old. And, uh, everybody, any and everybody knew that that was going to be a problem. Right. Why here, Why is this executive telling, getting on BET, you know, and everything, and there was no East Coast, West Coast war, and that uh, he didn't know about nothing, when in fact, the dudes that he paid good, me, Tell him, and then Wolf, his head of his security, he's had his bad boy tell him 
I'm not going and let you go. And he told, and Wolf told his mother, Ma, I ain't going out there. Puff don't want to go right. Oh, he didn't, he didn't want to. not getting to. Everybody, everybody feel at fault on some of the shit, but the fault ain't, the blame ain't going to the right people. Right. You know what I'm saying? But see, they, they, they have the avenue and they get Steve. Look, look at this, James. My story and your story and what you did for Death Row and what I did with Bad Boy is worth millions and millions of dollars. You understand? These yeah. cats get other cats get 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 avenues and get millions of dollars to tell our story, and they wasn't even there, and they don't know our story. They don't. They don't. Uh, Hollywood, the movie business, don't give us that avenue like they give it to those other cats. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Let me say this: I'm not gonna. I I can't even blame them. Because they take advantage of the situation. Us, we don't take no, advantage. No, they don't of the take situation. advantage. They don't take advantage, James. They are no. given the situation. They True. are given it. You but that's that's us. That's us doing these interviews. That's not us, James. Free. James, Who that's not us. Interviews? That's not us, bro. Who is it? That's not us. Give it that that, that we that we might do it giving them the interviews and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and and trying to get compensated for the interviews, but that's not us. They they, they don't they don't they don't give us the money. They don't give us the platform and the avenue to do that like they do them. So if we don't talk and say nothing, if we take ourselves out the equation, bro, then they have nothing. They have nothing. Then they're gonna be if if we do that, then they're ready and willing to pay us what we want to be paid to do it. So just but take what they do they'll make up. They'll make up. They'll make up shit, Jane. They'll make I, up shit and put it on a grand scale. Now everybody think it's the truth because we don't have the voice to speak on it. We don't have. Well, that's, that's how they do. They don't give us the voice to speak on it. They make up shit and they they they, they make it be what they want it to be. Well, just like we create these platforms, we can create a platform where brothers can push it together. Us can push it together and then do a documentary such as. BT or anybody else, you know what right. I'm saying? So we can do it ourselves, just like Gangster Chronicles, just like what Norm is doing, just like what you is doing. We can put that shit out there ourselves and and, and make the money. If 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 Puppy can start a business, if Shug Knight can start a business, I think I mean they open the doors for us to do pretty well, much whatever we, can, we want to. We see, can do it. Yo, anybody, brother, that was trying to do some kind of distribution out there. You know what they know where they at right now? Where? In jail. In jail. Bro, they don't want us to have distribution to put our own stuff out there. The people that can do it, and they're not gonna do it. You got the Tyler Perry's got a got a multi-million dollar st- uh, a studio. He will not uh put an avenue for things for uh street black uh uh, uh black documentaries, things that happen in the streets that's coming up. He he won't do that. Now those 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 white boys overseas might do it, cause they have no allegiance to America like that. Right, you right. Understand what I'm saying, huh? So we we do have leeway. We do have options. Would you say we might that? have some options? We might have some options. But listen, the thing about it is, is that brother, um, yeah. they have made this man so poisonous. When we go, listen to me. I did MTV and sit down there for five hours. You got 20 seconds or 30 seconds or something. VH1, <laughs> the same thing. You ain't lying about that. VH1, the same thing. So now people saying that I never told this story. Now I've been telling this story and since, since 97, 98. You understand? 98, 99, 2000, been saying the same shit. Right. But what happens is that they use the portion that they need, that they want, you understand? Well, that's and that's they, where the controversy come in. Like, like saying that you said you gave three different stories, you picked out different people. That's the controversy. That's, that's exactly lie. what they need. Listen, listen to me, brother. I see what, what Greg Caden wasn't telling y'all. I had a lawyer with me. 
right? Yeah. I had a lawyer with me. This lawyer was the governor's personal, one of the governor's personal lawyers because she was married to his brother. That's how powerful she was. She was doing me a solid because of my girl at the time. You right. Understand? She went with me and she took notes. She could tell you, I said, these guys look something like him, but they're not him. And then when they showed me the picture of the guy in the blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie, I said, this is the guy right here. They promised that they were coming back in about two weeks with a better photo or they was going to send for me to come out there and do a lineup. They never did, never heard from them since. You hear me? Yeah. Never heard from them from that point on. That's a facade and that's a lie. If they were taping me as they were, why you ain't heard a videotape? Anytime you pick out somebody in the lineup and you are law enforcement, you know what they make you do? What's that? Initiate. So and they should. What you're saying, if 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 that would be a natural fact, they should have showed that that piece of paper, that document, showing that you initiated the wrong person, or you exactly. you, you said who that was, and you put your initial. That's what you're saying. They didn't yeah. do that. Okay. Anybody you put out somebody in law enforcement, if you, and if you've been locked up, you've been stuff like that. They say, yo, this is a person right here, and they, can you put your initials right there. Right. Because they have to prove that you picked that person out. You understand? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm listening to you. You know, it's just a lot of shit. And I think... You know what it is, brother? This is what it is. You can't tell me what happened to me that day from somebody that you got stuff from 10 years ago that wasn't doing the right thing in the first place. Right, right. You understand? Right, right. If those officers were doing what they were supposed to do in the first place, then their stuff would have been airtight. You're going to come 10 years later, and I'm speaking about Greg Katie, and say, and hey, listen to me, whether I'm wrong or right or indifferent, you know why Lil C's wasn't in that uh, murder rap? What? You know why I wasn't in that murder rap? No. It was totally against the, what they was trying to say. If you was getting down to the, if you, if you, you're going to get all the witnesses. Wrong, right, or indifferent. You know, the police can only go by what, what, what people are saying. The police can only write a report from what you say. And I think getting all of this different information, yada, yada, you know, they put it together the way they see it. Um, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not giving, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking up for nobody. I'm not, disagreeing, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm shaking my head. Whereas is that sometimes you have people that articulate things in a way that help their case and help them. Because how can I say that? When somebody shit starts shooting, you ducked your head. And right. you and you did. I can't say that. So if let's you look say at you the, saw, huh? Let's look at huh? it. Let's let's look at it from from on the West Coast side. Let's look at it from let's let's take your point of view. I seen this bow tie. Okay, you seen this guy, but people on the West Coast know that it wasn't that guy. Would you be quick to say they lying or would you be quick to say, okay, that's a possibility. If all, if all the people on the West coast saying that this was a different individual, this person, they know for a fact did it, would you be, would you like, kind of like say, okay, maybe I'm wrong or James, why is all of them saying that? James, what I'm saying to you is that if the shooter, if the eyewitness of the shooter say a guy in a blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie, shot my brother, shot my man, shot my mentor, shot the guy who taught me how to rap. You understand? And I right. see this guy walk down the street in that direction, and five minutes later, that person is shot. 
I'm not going about what nobody else saying, but that person who said this is the individual who shot him because he is the eyewitness. No matter who or what somebody say or what nobody articulate, you know, if you get a guy, if if you get that person in that blue suit and that white shirt and that blue bow tie in court, and you got a you got a jury of twelve. And Lucy's get on that stand and say, that's the guy right there in the blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie that shot my friend that night. Who the jury going to believe? They going to believe the person that say that honestly say and can point you out and say that's him. They going to believe. Right. They They're going to gonna believe, believe the eyewitness. Yeah. They, gonna, they inclined to believe the eyewitness. Now, if I put them in going in that direction, they're going to believe he was on that street because they got the picture of him, me, him, and Puff. You know, Puff is in his car. I'm outside the car in the driveway, and I stop him. The FBI asked, the FBI asked me and the LAPD, did you have your gun on me? Yes, I pulled my gun. He looked at my gun. I pulled, put my arm down, looked him in his eye. He looked at me and went the other direction. You understand? He said, yo, this MF is ready. He vested up. He got his gun out. If I pull my weapon, I got to make sure, because if he pull his weapon, I already got my mind's out. I'm double tapping coming up. I'm steady double tapping coming up like I'm trained to do. You understand? I'm not pulling no punches with him because I want to go home to mines. So now, if he, he goes and sees me, don't say nothing, walk in the direction, and five minutes later, somebody I witness him as shooting, I don't care if Jesus Christ is in that courtroom and defending him. The jury going to say, well, it was an eyewitness that placed him there. It was an eyewitness that put him in the car. It was an eyewitness that said he shot him. Because you got to realize Lucy looking out the window. So they see him in the car. They see him enough to know that it was somebody dressed like the, somebody from the Nation of Islam. But now the, the LAPD want to make up something totally different. And then they want to do it because you got to realize that that was some professional shit, brother. The way they set that up, that was some professional shit. That wasn't no street shit. They knew where to get away. Because see, I found out this. I found that the death row was two blocks away from that, that place. About two, three blocks away from that place. Right? Now, when we chase after the guy, guy all, all of a sudden, we get to, we, when we turn that corner, we don't see shit. We don't see him, the lights, or nobody. Somebody told me the death row office was about two blocks away from that. I'm not saying they went up in there. I'm not saying they did that. And they used that. But it was somebody who knew. They already set up a shooting on the other side of the facility, had the police, had the fire people, had the emergency all on the other side of the facility. And we came out the backside. So all that stuff y'all see people on the streets and all that doctor and stuff, that wasn't on the side the big got killed on. They tried to doctor that and try to put that out there like it was, but it wasn't. I knew who was on that side of the street. So, well, brother, they can say whatever they want to say. I'm going by what was said that night. I'm going by what I saw that night, and I'm going by what I believe that happened. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to say said. this. Things happen, and it don't have to – well, it might have looked like a professional thing to you – but you know, shit is just is well planned. Uh, people are organized 
So, you know, for 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 that guy to bring him out here and and knowing the situation and what was going on, he knew it was a risk. Bottom line, he no, knew it was a risk that they was taking. About, you know what it was? It wasn't just a risk. To me, and I and I believe this, man, listen to me. Big was leaving bad boy. Big had his own label. He's making his own label. He had enough groups on that label that was going to be hot. Cameron, right. Charlie Baltimore, Little Kim. In the grand scheme of things, man, do you think, man, that this could have been some organized, man, by somebody else, man, just to further perpetuate the feud that y'all was having? You yes, know, that- brother, let me just tell you something, man. Um, when we came back, when we came back after chasing the guy, the first thing I did, I ran down to the parking lot. You understand? Because people talk. So, you know, uh, uh, talk. And when I heard DJ Quick say, yo, I think they got one of them bad. He on his cell phone. I think they got one of them bad boy niggas. They said they was going to get him. So now... Whoever he was around, whoever he was around, wherever he heard that, that means somebody was setting up to do something. So in the grand scheme of things, it was planned. All right. And 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 it 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 should have been planned. And this is me saying because here you really at war. And then now Tupac is dead. And then it gotta be some type of repercussion because it's his own. It should have been got, repercussions what, way before then. I know we got we got we got the mob and the South Sides fighting each other over Bad Boy and Death Row. So let's say it's planned. Let's say this: we blaming everything and everybody else, the people in cahoots and all this other shit. Why we don't blame ourselves for for putting ourselves in positions to to do shit like this to each other? Here we are killing for. And doing this yeah. other shit for, for, for other people, you know what I'm saying? When it didn't even have to go there. So let's blame ourselves for organizing for our own situations. This is this is our fault. All this shit is our fault. And there's a lot of people there because yeah. James. We were young, dumb, and full of calm back then. We were young, dumb, and full of calm back then. That's what I'm saying. We were That's young, not dumb, and full of combat. You That's what I'm trying to tell you. We were, we were young, dumb, and full of combat. So let's not blame hey. other people. It was, it was, it was our fault. We made a lot of mistakes back in the days. Uh, right. We was with the beef. We was with the beef like a motherfucker because it was something to do at the time, and 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 people right. were were eating off of this beef. Motherfuckers was getting paid for the war. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's say being compensated. Not getting what they wanted, but was getting paid for this shit. So it ain't it ain't that white dude over there or that white dude around the corner. We was at war. We this shit could have stopped a long time ago. Nigga, yeah, I'm finna I'm finna give you five grand. Cut it down, cut it off. I'm gonna give you fifteen thousand. Y'all stop this shit. We 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 can't. Bro, they was trying to do that. They was trying to do that, brother. Brother, before Pit, before Pac put out, hit him up, hit him up. They was trying to do that, even though the circumstance. Because listen, let me just tell you something. If Wolf was responsible for Jake getting killed, like people try to portray that in that image, because he wasn't. Because Wolf was right next to Suge when Jake got killed. You understand? So now, if Wolf, Suge would have never said I could squash him. Suge would have never said I could squash the beat. When when Eric B and them decide, yo, we got we can't make let's squash this death row thing, Suge would have said, or somebody in Suge Cat would have said, nah, man, them bad boy niggas killed my man. You understand? We can't squash it till one of them guys die. That wasn't the conversation back then. Puff all Puff all Puff had to do was send a representative, whether it could have been Zip or anybody from this camp, uh, a wolf or anybody, to that meet. They all went to the Mirage. 
They was all partying together. You understand? That's all he had to do was send somebody or say somebody, yo, I'm talking for bad boy and everything. Like, yo, this is what we going to do. We're going to squash his head. Puff decided, he said, F them niggas. I ain't fucking with them. Y'all making me look bad by even fucking with them niggas. That's what he said to Zip. Y'all making me look bad. Do you understand that? Right. He didn't want to squash nothing. That's the truth behind it, brother. He could have said, yo, okay, we was in, we was in, we was in LA and y'all, and they was in New York, they was in New York. He could have said, yo, listen to him, man. All right, Wolf coming over there. All right, Wolf and Riz is coming over there. Y'all, y'all figure it out or everything like that. And I'm whatever they say, I'm good with it. If 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 Shug was the street nigga or a real street guy, and he knew Wolf had killed him, and Wolf said me and Shug was cool, man. I should have never stopped talking to him. Wolf said that out of his own mouth. I stopped fucking with him because of Puff. So now, if Wolf was the real shooter, if Wolf killed Jake. Sugar would have said, no, nah, nigga, if he was real, I want that nigga head. He killed my man, or oh, he killed our people, I want his head. That wasn't the conversation. And Sugar never told nobody that Wolf killed Jay. That's not true. Because uh, he was right next to him. Now, 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 hold up. Let me let me defend Sugar on that one. Uh, when he came back, it was said who did it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna go into the logistics of 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 how it was put down, how it was said, but it it did come back that that guy was the guy. He didn't say what. People, wait a minute, bro. You can't tell me what should came and said at home. I don't know what I he think, said. In New we York. see. Let me just tell you something. Let me let me let me let me, let me, tell you, let me tell you some funny shit. Let me tell you some funny shit. We was all at envy. We was all at Envy's. Shug walked through the door. My kid's mother was right in the middle of the door. I'm in the corner, peeping game in the back. Shug walks in Envy's with the cigar in his mouth and everything like that. My, my, my kid's mother stopped and she said, oh, Shug Knight. He said, yeah, baby, how you doing? And grabbed him and hugged him. Right, Wolfman was in the club that night too. They was at the bar together, brother. So I can't see that man having a drink with that dude after he killed this man. Let me tell you something. I had much love for Meech and Terry them from BMF. Much love for them. Every time I see them, they come to parties. Every time I can, carte blanche. You understand what I'm saying? Southwest Tier tell you, carte blanche. When him and Wolf had that problem in Atlanta and Wolf didn't make it, we was in Cancun. He came up to me. Yo, I got a number. Yo, we got holes down there. Anything you want to drink, anything we want to eat, big man, come to the room. Chaz had the junior presidential suite. He had the presidential suite. Chaz was right there with me. I told a gangster with gangster dudes around him. I said, my man, let me just say this. I don't know what happened between you and Wolf, but we all was family. And he not here today based on whatever happened between y'all two. No disrespect, bro. I can't drink with you. He said, I respect that, man. Yeah. And he went, and I went my way. I had nothing That's to do bad. with him, but we was all yeah. family. You understand? I can't see Shook standing at the bar with this nigga with the few dudes he had with him. And said he know he killed Jake. 
and he ain't do nothing to say nothing. That's like a wow right now. I didn't see. We didn't know what he did when he came to New York, and and that's why I can't I can't speak on that. I can't elaborate on what he did when he came to New York. I know what being home. How did everybody get that guy name? I know of Wolf because because you know what? Let me just tell you something. Because of this is what it is. They put it on Bad Boy, right? But the only one who was doing, only one that could have done something like that or would have done something like that for Bad Boy was probably Wolf, Riz, or whoever they put down to do it. Do you understand? Yeah, so, so that, that's, that, 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 like that's that whether, okay, let's say this, whether it was Wolf or whoever, it was somebody from Bad Boy Camp. Jake wasn't no weenie ass cat. That was a real motherfucker. I got mad at Shook because Wolf lost his, I mean, uh, Jake lost his life. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think Shug could have made that call and said... I got to get back. I'm doing the interview. Sorry about that. I got to get you back. I'm not... Sorry about that. That, that Shug couldn't come back and say, oh, that beef ain't... We, we squashing that after Jake. It's it's full blown now. Regardless I just of said that. Got to say. Yeah. I just said that. Yeah, I so, just said that. How could... Now, 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 look what you just said now. Come on, put it into context. How could Suge make that decision on the Death Row East Coast beef if Wolf had to kill Jake and they was willing, Eric B noticed to be true. Big D didn't notice to be true. You understand? How could he can make that call if Wolf was really the one who did the killing? He can only he can only speak on who did it, which but how could, he make that call to squash, how could he make that call to squash the beat? He can't. That's what I'm saying. He, he can't make that call. My point exactly. Because he know in himself, Wolf was right next to him when Jake got killed. And, and uh, yo, let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something. And Wolf told me that himself, man. He said, man, I ain't kill that dude. Who said, man, I ain't kill that dude. Whether he did it or not, it was somebody from Bad Boy. We know that. So everybody is 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 guilty by association. You know what I'm saying? Like like all the shit that we do. Somebody, I fuck with you. Something happened. You going to jail because I, I mean I'm just guilty because I was there. Yeah. Accessory after the fact, but whatever the case might be, you're in law enforcement. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, you're right. It's called the it's called the Rico law. Yeah. <laughs> You know, accessory after the fact gets you damn near the same thing, almost. Well, you, you, it's a slap on the wrist, but you're going to go to jail for it. Just like just like somebody saying somebody killed somebody. The person yeah. who sent them to kill them gets more time than the person who did to kill them. That's right. So on, 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 on another note, yeah. you and Reggie, you and uh -huh. Reggie, you know, I think you and Reggie should have had that personal phone call. Y'all, y'all should. Well, when he come home, have that personal uh, conversation to to fix some of the things that it was. A mis it was your brother. I spoke to you. It was a misunderstanding, brother. I was talking about Greg Caden. I was talking about Reggie giving Greg Caden all that information, and I had that conversation prior to Reggie. I had that conversation with Reggie. You understand? No, I, what I'm talking about is what I'm talking about is. And I heard you say it on the on the on the interview, Reggie and his dad speaking on Reggie and Reggie Wright Senior. Right, your I brother. Think listen, listen to me. Check it out, brother. Check it out. If you look over the indictment and the paperwork, they charge Reggie Wright Senior, just like they charged Reggie Wright. Right. You understand? So now, right. somebody had to come forward, and the feds want somebody to come forward, and Take that. You understand? Now, if Reggie said, my father didn't have nothing to do with it, that may, bank account may have been in his name, but I was using that because I had access to it, the laundry money through it. If I was if I was using this stuff to do this and do that, then the feds look at that and say, okay, give us something. All investigations, let me just tell you something. 
Whether you if once you charge them something, man, the feds want something and they want more than what they already know. If I already know that, you can't give me that. Give me well, something that I don't know. That's how here, law enforcement works. Here we go again. Here we go again, Gene. Speculation is a motherfucker. Okay. And and Reggie did get his dad off. No, of I'm just telling you how we work. I know, but listen to me. Uh-huh. Reggie right Reggie did tell them that his dad had nothing to do with it. Got him off the hook, which he should have. Pops ain't getting down like that. So well, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You being in law enforcement or you being an investigator, why do you believe him? Why do I believe who? Reggie Wright. I believe Reggie because I, you like just I said, said I go, he got I'm just I'm you, you, you're missing the point, right? I'm an investigator, right? I right. got you and your you and your your your, your brother. Let's say I got you and your brother. Right. You say my brother ain't had nothing to do with that. Well, I got both of y'all. You using his account? How you not know that's a hundred some thousand dollars extra in his account? How you not know this, that, and the third like that? I don't believe it. Why should I believe you as an investigator? Because you tell me that your brother had nothing to do with it. You might just be mad enough to take all the time and do something. Or your brother might say, yo, my brother James don't have nothing to do with this. You understand? So now as an investigator, what I got to do is I want to I wanna make my case either bigger or better or clad tight. I'm going to tell you, okay, brother, say your father don't have nothing, your brother don't have nothing to do with it. What can you give me to prove that your brother don't have nothing to do with it, or give me something. That's just any investigator who does investigations. That's just, it's, it's, that's just the investigator. Had, wait a minute. The best the investigator has nothing really to do with it. He's out there to investigate. Now I've been to jail multiple times, and I know if 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 I'm saying my brother ain't got nothing to do with it, that weakens your case. Because I'm going to get on the stand if I have to to say my brother ain't got nothing to do with it. Nine times out of ten, the law don't want to go there and say he knew. Because you got to prove to the jury that he had, well, he knew exactly what was going on when that money was placed. Right, so, brother, brother. Nine, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me finish, Jay. Go ahead, go ahead. The, the prosecutor don't want to take that chance because trying to make him look, wait a minute, trying to make dad look like he knew and you can't prove dad actually knew. Reggie had access to the account, which I'm, 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 Reggie said this before. That's why I'm speaking on it. So that's how his pops got off. You don't have to give no more or no less because he, because he did that. And if he did more than that, why is he in jail? You know what I'm saying? Why is he in jail? You don't have you don't have nobody that was on his case speaking speaking bad on Reggie. Reggie still communicate with these cats. So Reggie, I think honestly, he doing time. I think because he was a police officer, he got less time. And I've said it on gang. Wait a minute. I've said it on Gangster Chronicles. Multiple times. I think if you're in law enforcement and you break the law like I break it, I think you should be uh, uh, sentenced like like you would sentence me. But no, 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 no. They should, sentence, they should sentence him, not him per se. Anybody in law enforcement get caught doing the crime, we should sentence more time than they would than you because they're supposed to know better. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? Yo, exactly. dog, this dude said I punched him in the face. I punched him in the head and put my gun to his head. They was trying to give me 10 and a half years. 10 and a half years. I, to- I know I didn't do it. I went to trial. I won it. You understand? June 6, 2011. I won the case. You understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying to you is, is that they was trying to give me 10 and a half years on an MF that was lying. It cost me over $92,000 all together in court fees and everything. Court fees, lawyers, and all that stuff. What I'm trying to tell you, brother, is this. Is that based on just because you say 
somebody ain't had nothing to do with it, they don't believe you. They looking at the fact over a, a certain amount of time that this amount of money was in your account. You're going to tell me that you don't look at this account. You don't know what this money coming from. You ain't asked no questions about those money. Those are things that people who do legitimate investigations ask questions and do that. I don't care about what they do. I'm glad he only got a little time. I don't want to see nobody locked up in jail. But when they talk about investigations and federal investigations, I've been through it and I've done them. You understand? I've been through federal. I got I got news articles. I got papers and everything where I've been investigated. I've been through because they want one bad cop. They would rather have one bad cop than 10 crooks in the street. You understand? And because of association, they was trying to get me for a long time. You understand? So what I'm trying to tell you is, brother, I understand that. And what I'm trying to say to you is, is that I have nothing against Reggie. I don't have nothing. I don't care about that situation. You know what I'm saying? If we talk as men, we talk as men. We ain't never got to be friends. You understand? Well, that's what I'm saying. I thought y'all worked out y'all differences. And then when when Reggie, somebody called my phone again. When y'all worked out y'all differences, you would think that 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 situation would have been over. But when Reggie went to jail, you had did that. No, no, uh, bro. What 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 you didn't what you didn't see what you didn't see and what you didn't understand. Reggie was allowing people, and he was going at me still about certain things, and then he'll laugh and play it off like he didn't know better. Like he didn't know different. And I had already discussed that and had conversations with him about certain situations. I had always had conversations with him about um, what you call pulling the gun on Suge. Um, see gun. You understand? And then he said that he, I said, he pulled the gun on see gun and said, don't rear roll, don't raise it. He said it was Keefe D. And I don't know what Gene Deal talked about. I don't care what Gene Deal is saying. I know who I pulled the gun. Then see, got to get out the federal penitentiary and gets on Doggy Diamond and say, yo, I was the one who pulled the gun on Suge. I was the one who did this and did that and stuff like that. When I had already told Reggie it was him, then Reggie went back and then tried to downplay what I was saying to him. And all that. And it was a other, other couple of things. I'm not trying to say I went at him because of that, but I was actually trying to express that Greg Kading got his information from Reggie. He had to, to me. That's what I believe. That's my personal belief. Because he was the producer on my on, on Murder Rap. Producers, what they do, they gain information, they give people stuff, they, 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 they make stuff happen for the people who give them the thing. And I just, I, I, I told you and I expressed that to you. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm listening to you. Yo, I expressed that to you in Greg Kading's book. He said that Reggie Wright told him that Suge Knight bought uh, Bungie an Impala, just like the one that was seen on the scene when Big got killed. You mean Poochie? Poochie, Poochie. Sorry about that. Poochie. So now, if Suge is my man, like I said to you, there's no way I'm telling the police he bought anybody no car that looked like somebody who was wanted, wanted for a murder. That's the and last that's thing I'm telling anybody. And that's in the book? That's in the book, brother. I got. The, I actually got the book. Um, and I was reading it. I ain't got to that part yet. But why, would he, why, why would he throw his man, on, I, him, Suge, and you, all y'all grew up together? Why would he throw his man under the bus like that? I don't know. I ain't read it. I ain't read it. But it's not, I'm not I'm not going to downplay it either. Uh, I'm going to read the book. And if that's in the book, I'm, that's something I'm going to ask Reggie. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think every, – everybody know how Reggie is. Everybody know how Reggie he, – he likes the bullshit. He, he with it. Um, anybody that he feels that attacks him, He's going to attack back with vengeance. Mm-hmm. He's going to come with vengeance. And, 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 and he's going to try to prove his point. Everybody knows. That's Reggie. 
I've been knowing Reggie from 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 way back. Right. And like I told I, I you, respect I, your loyalty to him. I respect your loyalty to him, and I respect what you're saying and everything like that. But you know, it, it, you know, guys, I know from way in the back, in the back, I got the same loyalty to him and everything like that. Did I? Did I know I'll die for? Did I go to war with the whole nine yards? But what I'm saying to you is that it just didn't seem feasible for him to throw his man under the bus like that. And and if Greg Caney lied on him by saying that, he just should, should have sued him for putting that in the book and saying that. Well, I don't think I don't think Greg would lie. I don't think he would put it out there knowing that that him and Reggie is also cool. So if it's in the book, then one would have to assume that Reggie said it. Um, you know. At the end of the day, I, I truly believe that, you know, our our fight after the beef is, I don't think it's necessary. I think, man, somebody needs to come to a medium and say, okay, man, this shit has been over 20 years. Right. We don't need to keep coming after each other. Well, and, listen, and- I'm not coming after nobody from death row. That's not my ploy. That's not my plan. You understand? You know, like, um, if... If 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 I have to apologize for Reggie for putting that out there for saying that I apologize. I don't have right. no problem with that. I don't have to deal with him. I don't have to speak with him. I don't have to do nothing. Like I apologize as a man the way I put it out there. My my object was to get at how Greg Cady got his information and how Greg Cady trying to make like he the super detective, but then he left a whole lot of witnesses out that didn't go to what he wanted to say. You understand? Those three girls that was walking on the side of the uh, 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 the car, you understand, on the street, he didn't even question them. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even uh, bring them to the table or stuff like that. You understand? So my whole thing about it is, is that it's a lot of things that he left out that because it didn't pertain to what the, the, the thing that he wanted to draw. And that's can finally I good. You, I don't care about Can I ask you a question? Jen, can I ask you a question? If you've been in law, law enforcement, if a witness don't seem credible, would you use them? First of all, I would, have to, I, would have to, I, would have to I would have to interview him first in totality to see where he's not credible at. Right. Knowing that this might hurt my case, would you <laughs> present that first? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying <laughs> to get on your hurt my case. <laughs> Exactly. You got to do things that it might hurt. You like, like my. Why would it hurt your case? Let's say hurt, taint. It hurt. Come on, man. This is. I'm and I'm speaking law enforcement terms, term, terminology. If if it, it happens every day, if this witness don't seem credible, I'm not going to use them. If well, this witness is known not to be truthful in a certain degree, I'm not going to use them. Am I right or wrong? I'm doing an interview. I'm going to call you back as soon as it's over with, okay? All right. So that's what happens. You're using using a word that you're using a word in which you got to say, well, I can't tell you what to say, but if the witness is not, if the witness is painting the atmosphere that's not feasible to your case, you understand? Or it's going against what you say. Like, if the witness say, oh, he was there at 11.30 and I seen him jump in the cab, but then somebody say, yo, he was there at 11.45 or 12 o'clock and he did that at 12.40, but the one witness say, yo, no, nah, he jumped in the cab at 11.35, 11.40 or 11.30. And the other witness say, no, nah, he was here at 11 to 12 o'clock. You're not going to use the witness to jump in the, city, he jumped in the cab. When... It all boils down to well, a but, but what, what what you do is is that it, you might not bring him a thing, but then what if the defense have that witness there? What if the, he not there for you, but the defense had that witness there, and the defense can say, yo, listen here, I took a picture of him getting in the cab at this time. You understand? Boom. Because he was a star. That's why I took a picture of him. So my whole thing about it is it's based on what suits your case, as you said. So if I'm telling you that it was a guy walked up to me and Puff, and he had a bow tie on, blue suit, white shirt, you understand, a peanut-looking head, and then a witness say, 
I seen him pull a gun out the window and shoot my friend. And that's not pertaining to you, what the case and what direction you are. You're not going to use those witnesses in your case. Okay. So you're going to use again, the witness in the way you want to go. Once again, it goes to a credibility because if, if, if they looked at that and took what you said and what, uh, I keep saying his name, Mace, Lil said, Lil C's, what he said, somebody should have been arrested. So it, it, at the end of the day, once again, it boils down to credibility, right? They felt that they didn't want to say, he said this and then he said this. Yo, bro. So, yo, bro. I'm, I'm asking the question. <laughs> I mean, I, I ain't no, I ain't in the law. So look, what I'm just saying is just, it just, Lucy's gave a, Lucy's gave, Lucy's gave an eyewitness account on that particular week on what he saw. Now, I gave an eyewitness account of what I saw. You understand? Not 10 years later, not some stuff that was formulated for people to say their own ass from prosecution. Now, you take what was said that night, that week, because that's the strongest part of your case, not something that was formulated 10 years later. You take what was said that night, that week, you understand, from people who was actually there. So why you think they never arrested nobody? Because it probably would have it probably would have went to the point whereas that LA PD may have been responsible or held responsible because they had rogue cops working in situations that could have caused the death of Biggie Smalls and they would have been sued for millions and millions of dollars. And it, it wouldn't have mattered whether he knew he was coming into the lion's den, knowing that it was a gang war. Tupac just got killed. Everybody knows, okay, Tupac gone. That that can't just go by. That's not going to fly. Especially no. coming, and then coming out here, uh, and then that that going back to Cali shit was out, and then now here go people like, man, I dare these dudes to come down here. And, and, exactly. And, That's you know what, what I'm saying? Okay. Did you see me on multiple occasions say there was more than one different people that wanted us dead? Yeah, yeah. On multiple occasions. On yeah. multiple occasions. We had a beat with somebody from the Nation of Islam in Soul Train, and I don't know today why it was that, but I know it was strong enough for Mustafa to step in the dude's chest. You understand? Yeah. We had a beef that got, because uh, 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 Snoop guys no man got shot up. Right. When Tango got shot up here and read him. So was it true when they said Biggie get went to the radio station and told everybody that it that's, is? That's true. That's true, brother. He said, I don't see how y'all gonna let them do that in Brooklyn, man. You know, the stuff he said, he shouldn't have said it. Right. That's true. There's right. No so, so he painted right. the picture as if... Hold up. He, so now you got Snoop them people. That's why Snoop trying to say, Yo, we always people, stuff like that. And then you hear this stuff going, to, he was going at big, he was going at big on the radio. All, there's a lot of songs popping up now that he was going at big, that they was releasing right. Death Row. So now, but he's saying like it was, that's, you're going to play that role. You're going to play that role. But behind the scenes, he was going at him, you know, talking about him, bad. You understand? So now you got that. Then you got the fact that they painted the picture that Wolf killed Jake and they painted the picture that Wolf or somebody from Bad Boy killed Jake in Atlanta. Those are three losses people from the West Coast has taken. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And dudes from out there, my brother was out there in Sacktown, they don't play that, just like anywhere else. They'll fight, they, they'll kill for colors. You think they ain't going to kill when they peoples come up there? Or they ain't going to try to hit somebody or do something? They have done it for less. Is that facts or what? Oh, yeah, that's that's 100. All right, so now we know that. I'm stupid for even going out there because you got to understand this is what they told to get us out there. 
we're gonna do the, we're gonna be at the hotel we're gonna do the studio and we're gonna do radio the studio and radio and that's it even that's still dangerous that's still dangerous yeah because everybody knew y'all was coming everybody knew y'all was there studio radio and day i said okay uh, we got our chances and then i thought puff was gonna hire those militia men that he had before that's what i was told he had six guys from the six four six guys that was mercenaries and boy they was on their shit they knew what they were doing right you know what i'm saying i've trained with some people that was you know from the dea from the uh from transit from uh uh, uh um from the state police and these guys was oh, they they on their thing they was on their stuff so now I thought we was going to have him. And I called Kirk, bro. Yo, Kirk, we ain't got the mercenary men. No, Puff ain't going to hire no more security. What? Y'all got us out here naked. We need more security, brother. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But listen, Jane, we talked a lot about this stuff, man. We're going back on this East Coast, West Coast. Running. Yo, it's something that I want to say today, man. Yo, I put all that beside, all that's behind us, man. These young brothers of the day, man, they still think it can't happen to them. They still think that there's not an a, a, a entity that's out there to stop them. You understand? We see it today, man. We trapped in our houses. You know, we go next to people. You understand? We go and try to form some, 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 some kind of rally or whatever like that. We all, go, we all could end up dead. They didn't put this poison in this air. They didn't put this poison out here in these streets and stuff like that to stop us, you know what I'm saying, from stopping them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you got to realize those people in China, they was petitioning. They was going out there fighting the uh, government. You understand? Because they knew that that YG, they, they, that 5G, they knew all the stuff that was they was trying to do. So what they do, they put out this epidemic. They put out this thing to stop them from gathering that could kill you up from being next to somebody. You understand? And, 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 and to go off of that, you know, even that, we ain't even looking at it like that. You know, our people thinking it's a goddamn joke. I'm here to tell everybody out there that it's not no joke. Uh, my uncle just lost his daughter behind this, this, this virus. Um, and, and his granddaughter and grandson was, uh, Subject to the shit. So it's some real shit. Real Fuck man. hanging out, man. You gotta take we gotta take care of ourselves and, and, and the people around us. You know, we wanna hang out, but then we go home and we're giving it to our kids. And I don't know if that was my little cousin case, but the kids got her daughter got it and her grandbaby had it. So right. thank God, through the grace of God, that they home. But right. she lost her life. And uh you know, it's a cold thing because we just buried my auntie on the uh, February the fifth, and then she died a month after, just mm -hmm. just a week and a half, two weeks ago. And we're not taking shit serious. We're not paying attention to what's really fucking going on. What's been said, Ma? I mean, Jane. Sorry about that, man. It's just all you just say, Ma. Jane. That's, it's good. That's it's good. Ma. Jane. Ma. Jane. Ma. Jane. Ma, Jane. Jane, hey. let me just say something, brother. Listen here. President get on television. He got four or five people around him, five, six people around him. I thought it was six feet or 13 feet. Why are they not worried? Why they don't see? Why, why I can't touch them? Why I can't be a part of them? Why neither one of them have it? Did you ever look at that? That the president them gets on television and they shake hands, no social distance and everything like that. What he says, some of the people to in his cabinet, some of the people in his cabinet did catch it. Yeah, but they're not around him. They don't get on stage. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. In his cabinet, you could be in his cabinet and never see him. Right, right. You understand? And then they, they'll make it known or something like that because that dude go home to his family or that dude may be out and about. Right. But what I'm saying, when, the point that I'm getting to you is that, is that, they putting something out here to stop this, and they spoke about this. 
And I was going to talk about this on my show. Don't you know, in 1997, in the February issue of George Magazine that's done by uh, John F. Kennedy Jr., right? He had an interview with Bill Gates, right? Yeah. And Bill Gates talked about social distance. He talked about the internet taking over or, or running the government that the government would need so many different peoples. He talked about people not gathering in 1997. And then he talked about in that magazine about that there will be viruses that will cause people not to social gather. So, you know, I look at this like this, man, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist or nothing like that, but this dude, has done so much and, and and cleared so many viruses on the computers. He brought a virus real. He brought a virus to life. Right, me. right, right. And look what it's doing to us, man. Yo, well, I, and he talked about in 2020. And this this magazine was wrote in 1997. And if anybody don't believe me, go look at that magazine. It's two. It's two part of the article. Right, it's two. He <laughs> talked about it on two different parts in the magazine. I think it right. starts on seventy-eight, then one on one, then another part says anything when he mentioned about two thousand and twenty. Right, dog. People don't see. They talk about these stimulus checks and everything like that. They trying to disrupt the the American government and American people. You understand to bring it into like a dictatorship. Yeah, I believe that. To bring that. it to a dictatorship, brother. So, what you say to the to the to the people in New York that that want to hang out, that's not paying attention? My man, uh, brother, on a shooting dice, man, playing CeeLo. I was going to the dentist. I was going to the dentist, brother, and I seen brothers. It was six brothers on. A, I'm gonna call them out on 112th and and Lenox Avenue, while people was in the. People were in the line on Fine Fair waiting to go in the grocery store. They on the corner shooting dice with no gloves on their hand, no notice, like it can't happen to them. Right. That part. I'm saying to this old saying my grandmother used to tell me, boy, you don't believe fat meets greasy. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing out here. Yeah. I go on, I go on Facebook, man, and and I see these these kids at a one year old birthday party. It's like 40, 50 of them, and the police come maybe forty deep. And I see this little girl. She waving her hands and talking shit to the police. I look closer. It's my goddamn niece. My niece out here <laughs> on one. So I, she knew when I was calling. She didn't don't answer that 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 call. And, and I'm like, wow. And then right after that, my cousin passed. Now she get the picture. Let's mm -hmm. not wait until it, it get close to home like that to really believe in what the fuck is going on. This shit ain't no joke. So, right. you know, on that note, man, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time out with us, man. And if you ever want to talk to me on your show or, you know, we can conversate, chop it up like today, man, I'm, I'm willing for that. Um, I believe we all good. Uh, I'm glad you're getting better from your uh, your situation. You gotta you just gotta keep exercising and doing your thing. Yeah. Not 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 to cut y'all off. I wanna go back to something real quick earlier that Gene said, and I'm glad you said that, man, because this has been kind of my thoughts. They've been tr slowly trying to introduce socialism to this country. If you see the yeah. pattern, this is an experiment almost like, okay, they send them brothers the $1,200 checks or whatever right there, right? Yeah. The, um, the way they got the unemployment set up, cats getting the extra $600 a week on top of the thing just to stay at the crib, they're right? They're trying to break, they're trying to break the, they're trying to break the government. Once he, let me tell you something. There's only three governments in this whole country that don't owe the World Bank, and that's the the uh, uh, Cuba, 
Zimbabwe and uh, 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 what is it? North Korea. North Korea. All right. They don't owe the World Bank shit. Do you understand me? They don't yeah. owe the World Bank. Only three countries that don't owe the World Bank shit. Zimbabwe, North Korea, and Cuba. Y'all understand that? So they want everybody to come up to their own banking system. You understand? Everybody already contributed to them, but once they, what you call, wipe everybody out, now they get one currency. They had a currency that comes up under these phones. Everybody get a phone and all your money and all your bank account and all your money goes into that phone and to your mm-hmm. bank thing, to your banking, to their banking system. You get it? Yeah, I get it. You understand? They try. They trying to. They what they trying to do is they trying to. It's no reason how they, they never gave nobody nothing in the first place. Right. They're giving it to break. They're giving it to break the country down, man. To send it into a recession. To send it into a recession, brother. Oh, the shit is crazy. And, to a you know, I don't... No, into a depression. And that stuff, yo, when we get out of this, we'll probably be dead. You know, us in our 50s and 60s by the time we get out of this. One. You think man. so? You think it's going to take that long? Bro, but listen to me, man. The depression took eight years. What, to get out of the, the depression? Mm-hmm. And they just start seeing, they just start seeing any possibility and promise into the 60s. So this is this shit is going back to the drug dealing days. Watch and see what I'm telling you. This is going to go back to the 80s. But it's going to be hard for them to do it. Wow, man. Let, 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 let's hope we wrong, man. But I but I don't doubt you. I don't I, I don't th- I, I don't think we wrong, brother. They, they they've been setting up. Yo, listen to me, man. When they do they do different things to see can they get away with stuff. That's how this. Uh, the Illuminati. That's how these systems work. When they got rid of, when they knocked down those towers, those two towers, and blamed it on those people, stole all that gold from the uh, World Trade Center. You know, one of the biggest banks that held uh, all the gold in the United States was in the World Trade Trade Centers, right? Right. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know that. Okay, check it out. When did gold ever disappear? <laughs> When did gold ever melt? When did gold ever burn and melt? They got none. They recovered no none of that gold. Mm. Where that gold at? Well, we are greedy in the motherfucker, but you know I don't follow that. Where that, that gold shit. at, brother? United. Where that gold at? When they got rid of robbing uh, those 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 Arabic countries from all that gold that was here in the United States, bro. That was one form of getting away with it. When they got rid of killing all those people that was at work at the trade center, that was one way of getting away with it. They, they said, we got away with that. Let's go to the next phase. Mm. They do different things that they already wrote about. This shit is already written. The two towers of Babylon would be destroyed by two, two birds. Wasn't that already mm. one written? Yeah. No Sodomus. Well, one of the Illuminati, two towers of Babylon. A lot of this stuff is already written, brother. They are if 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 UK did the same thing that they doing, giving that gated people money, gated people like that, and they ruined the UK economy, and they haven't recovered from it yet. You understand? What do you think it's going to do to the United States? It's going to ruin the economy, right? Going to ruin well, everything. On that note, I think everybody needs to follow up on this shit. I know I do. Um, it's just a scary thing. It's a scary thing. Not knowing where we're going to go. Not knowing if you're going to see your grandkids and kids grow up because of the way they running this motherfucking right. planet. Um, it's crazy. But yeah, you know, Let me ask some, a, a Gene, for the people out there, what's the name of your channel? Oh, it's... Uh, the Gene Deal Show, uh, Cooking in Conversation. 
Y'all got it right there, people. Gene Deal Show, Cooking and Conversation. You know, like James said, he's going to be going over there to chop it up, man. It's this beautiful thing, man, to see brothers getting along and moving forward with stuff, man. And yeah. on that note, people, James, you want to send them out? Man, thanks for watching another episode. Episode 52 or 53, I ain't sure. Yeah, episode uh, 53. Episode 53 with the Gangster Chronicles. And, uh, man, we appreciate y'all listening to us. Big ups to uh, Gene Dill. We thank you, brother, for, for coming on the show and talking with us. And we out.